Welcome everybody. Oh, not yet, not yet. Uh, hold on, hold on. I, I, I'm going to start now, and then we're going to we, we will start already. We have started. We are. On no, no, we haven't. We haven't. Okay, here we go. Welcome everybody to this international launch of short films from Indonesia on interfaith understanding. Uh, we organize this. Uh, partnership between the HL Center Inclusive Citizenship Project and Lutheran World Federation and Minority Rights Group International and a number of regional partners in Indonesia as a joint effort to raise the awareness on how interfaith understanding may be promoted and, and, and disseminated through film and also through education. And we'll show you some short films that have been produced locally in Indonesia. And the whole project is supported by NURAD, the Norwegian Agency for, Di for Development Cooperation. And uh, I'm the project manager of the Inclusive Citizenship Project, and we're going to do this in different countries, leading up to an international conference in December, also online. So please follow us. Uh, and by that, I'm just going to greet one of our distinguished speakers today, which is the UN Special Rapporteur on Minority Issues, Fernand de Varenne. And Fernand, are you with me from wherever you are at the moment? Absolutely, thank you. And we'll hear back from Fernand later in this launch, which will be about 75 minutes long. And by that, I give the floor to our distinguished moderator, Sivan Kitt from the Lutheran World Federation, who is taking us through this from his office in Geneva. Please, Sivan. Hi there. My name is Sivan Kitt. I'm the Program Executive for Public Theology and Interreligious Relations with the Lutheran World Federation. I'd like to welcome you uh, on behalf of the organizers. And um, if, you are in, if you are able, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. For those of you who are in Zoom or even on YouTube, uh, you can say your name, where you are from, and also um, know what do you do, what is the organization that you represent, so that we can get a sense of uh, who you are. Now, for those of you who need uh, Bahasa Indonesia, please click on the globe where you have interpretation, if you're in Zoom, and then you will have uh, interpretation to Bahasa Indonesia. Untuk semua orang yang perlu uh, dengar Bahasa Indonesia, silakan klik Globe Interpretation uh, untuk uh, dengar interpretasi Bahasa Indonesia. So I hope that's helpful for, for you. Now, um, uh, afterwards, we will be going through a series of films and then we'll have a conversation with the panelists as well as the directors. And we have a, a series of great films uh, uh, for, for our session today. So for the first uh, film uh, I'd like to introduce to you is uh, produced by KNLWF, Committee National Lutheran World Federation and Jakartaro. And the title of the film is Place Among the Stars. So I'd like to introduce this film to you as we launch it and you can share what you feel about it afterwards in the chat. Mana aja kan kita kirimkan bantuan ini? Hmm, cukup untuk satu desa terakhir. Pernah ke desa itu sebelumnya? Belum. Kalau lihat di peta sih, sepertinya nggak susah. Nggak banyak persimpangan jalan. Nggak semudah itu. Banyak jalan baru yang belum terkatakan. Ada juga jalan lama yang mungkin udah terputus. Lagi pula, nggak semua jalan cocok dan bisa dilalui oleh kendaraan ini. Kita nggak benar-benar bisa tahu jalan mana yang sesuai untuk kita. Mungkin bisa aja semua jalan saling terhubung dan ternyata ketemu di tempat yang sama. Tapi kemanapun tujuannya, bukankah pada akhirnya kamu tetap harus memilih jalan yang kamu yakini? Hi, 
Hai susah Tinggalkan desa ini sekarang juga That was the movie Place Among the Stars, a very personal story. I'd like to invite the director, Risto, to join me right now. And Risto, welcome to our uh, Interfaith short film launch and congratulations on producing uh, and directing this film. Now, you, I guess uh, the viewer might be interested to know, why did you choose a more personal approach to tell the story? And there's kind of a lot of metaphors here and there, road, directions, But let's start with that. Why did you decide to go personal rather than a big story? Something 
Go ahead. Yeah, uh, we believe that uh, based on our experience on uh, campaign uh, tol uh, campaigning the tolerance, tolerance and diversity issues, we feel that uh, personal sides of story uh, give us more inspirations than the dogmatic or the uh, theoretical or conceptual approach. But uh, as long as we try to use the personal story, it's give us the uh, more than the knowledge, but also the experience. Uh, and we deal with our emotions, our vulnerability, vulnerability and our uh, desires to uh, know the others. So it will be a great situation uh, when you, you, you can know something about the diversity, but you, can, you only can experience the diversity by... Uh, uh, embrace it with your personal experience. I think we we try to uh, uh, unlock the concept on this movie. And and then there was also a bit of um, there was some kind of reconciliation. There was a conflict. It was yeah. like a family conflict going on in there, right? And uh, okay. can you elaborate a bit more about the direction that you were going with this, especially in the context of Indonesia? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we don't mention the religions, we don't mention the, the place or something, but uh, from what we see in the movie, uh, people can get uh, some uh, uh, it's, uh, some assumptions that, uh, that uh, this uh, 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 the, uh, conflict of religions uh, about the minor, minor religions in, in our uh, Indonesian uh, conditions. But yes, uh, in our condition in Indonesia, there's sometimes uh, a little bit conflict about the uh, discriminations to the minorities uh, and the, to the uh, people uh, who have the heretic view, <laughs> assumption as a heretic view. That uh, it's, it happens. So uh, we can say that this movie, based on true story, but we a little bit uh, dramatically uh, elaborate it to to the movie, so it can be, uh, experience our. Uh, we can feel the experience and become universal for other people who have ex uh, ever been discriminated. And uh, so that's interesting, right? From a director's point of view, you know, even though it is a very particular story, but yeah. there's a universal application. Yeah. And in your experience of working on this, uh, what were some things that you find that was your highlight as a director? <laughs> for you. Uh, we, we found that uh, the story is so simple, but uh, we find that uh, it touches every of us. Uh, so uh, this movie is uh, uh, created by collaboration, yeah, most of uh, us from the other uh, and some of our uh, crew are uh, the first time uh, engaged with a religious uh, uh, diversity issue. So they, they got the, the point by uh, experience uh, to making this movie. So uh, we feel that uh, our campaign uh, is not only uh, through the campaign or the personal or, or the uh, conceptual campaign, but we also have the, them to experience diversity by uh, feel what the stories of this movie uh, bring them. Okay. Thank you so much. So it's not just the story in itself, but there's a yes. story behind the story, which is the stories of the crew and all those yes. who are doing it because you came from, all of you come from different backgrounds yourself. Yes. And you're not from one religious grouping. So there's a story behind the story and that's probably something for us to reflect on. So thank you, Risto, for, for this yes. brief little interview. And uh, if there's one thing that you, you enjoy the most, what is that one thing that you enjoy the most doing this? So. <laughs> I enjoy most of the people for the first time to see this movie when we uh, uh, screen this in the close uh, or the restricted uh, screening. Uh, they 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 feel stirred up by their emotions <laughs> and they then ask uh, what the meaning of this movie. So uh, that's why that's what the point we we're gonna do with this movie uh, to make people reflecting and to make people. Uh, connect the movie to, uh, direct through their experience and their their understanding of uh, religious diversity and uh, 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 above of us, uh, uh, the humanity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, really, this is, this is um, very exciting to hear from you directly. And we're going to bring in the panel right now to just reflect a bit on your, your, your movie and to share with us what they think. So thank you, Risto. So the panel would be Fernando, who is one of the producers of the movie. And we have Sam from uh, Minority Group International and also Ingville as well from HL Center and Inclusive Citizen uh, uh, Project. So um, 
Sam, would you want to get us started? When you watched it, what did you feel? What were some things that came to your mind? Um, sure. Well, I want to start by saying thank you, Rizdo, for this film. It was very touching to watch, um, very moving, and it leaves the viewer with a lot of uh, things to reflect on afterwards in just six minutes, you know. Um, my initial reaction was this notion that a key factor that contributes to interfaith understanding is you know, making sure that different points of views and experiences are, are understood and, and um, accessed. And I feel this film does exactly that. You know, even the title, the choice of your title, A Place amongst the, Among the Stars, I feel that it indicates this idea of um, belonging, so seeking to belong. And the film, to me, um, how I understood it is that you can see a lot of pain behind a message when someone's told that you don't belong in society. And um, you've done it so magically and movingly that I think uh, these, it's unpacked this complex no notion of belonging and seeking to belong. Um, but I also loved how you showed the courage of the protagonist to reopen old wounds. You know, the, this whole reflective um, movement, this, the whole discourse on journeys. So taking, turning left and actually making that decision. It marked the decision made to revisit these wounds and um, promote this, um, this idea that it's okay to continue discussing these things and revisit this pain. Um, so that was just, you know, a few initial thoughts for me. I, I thought it was very moving. And again, I, I thank you for putting it together just from conceptualization to actually producing it. It's fantastic. And I'd like to invite all the participants, please feel free to also add your comments either to all panelists and attendees and share with us what you, you feel and what you have gained from, from watching the film. And I'm sure Ingville and uh, Fernando would have something to say to add on. And as they speak, you are welcome to give us some, some questions that it brought up for you as well. So um, Ingville, what yeah. do you think? Yes, well, uh, I actually... Uh, got this feeling when I watched the film that it says something deeply important and deeply touching about the fact that we are all humans and the importance of seeing one another as such, as human beings. And although there are differences and we have to recognize the differences and respect them, and they are very important for the identity of every person, uh, including faith, differences of faith, we are always human beings. And I think that is one of the messages, at least to me, uh, of this film, that the, the guy who was the perpetrator managed to, to see beyond his hostile images, his group hostility, his stereotypes, uh, his, his, the coldness in his heart, uh, fell away for a second and he could see that these are human beings and, and by that, it helped him to reach out and, and, and find his own humanity, sort of, which he hadn't been in touch with, and by that reached out to them as on an equal ground. And I think that's at least what our center works on here at the HL Center and the Inclusive Citizenship Project is to show that there is a danger of creating group stereotypes and a group hostility, and we have to see beyond that because it can lead to mass atrocities at the end. And and human rights, rights uh, violations, we have to stick to stick to the fact that we are all human beings and and not dehumanize one another, although there are differences. Uh, even though there's so many human wrongs, right? But we are still trying to focus on human rights and uh, how to put things right. So appreciate that comment. Fernando, you are actually dialing in all the way from Indonesia, Sulawesi, and giving us yes. a, a feel of, of Indonesia right <laughs> behind you. And how did you feel when you watched the film? And of course, you were part of the production as well. Maybe there were some reflections on that. But let's just go with the film first. What are key themes that were very important for you? Yes, this, uh, I found this movie very touching, very, um, <clears throat> uh, like it delivers a good understanding about interfaith diet practices. You know, uh, the, the film, uh, A Place Among the Stars, the film del delivers a different perspective of over overcoming hatred and limitation of human rights, because we know like the film shows that uh, the, the lady's uh, human rights is, is uh, deprived of by someone. And of course, this is about human rights, about freedom of religion or belief. And you know, many times also voices of the victims are not heard by the authority for the reason of keeping public tranquility in many cases in Indonesia. And 
And you know, in in the film, uh, however, the, the the victim does not stop to build good relations uh, with the pe perpetrators uh, and with the community uh, where the perpetrators are living. Uh, so the interfaith dialogue practice delivers, I mean, teaches us like uh, how how to to use other ways uh, of overcoming hatred, of overcoming um, uh, like uh, limitation of human rights by doing something by by establishing dialogue but more practically, more practice. So, you know, in the film, uh, you know, like uh, she realizes that everyone in this pandemic time has been hardly hit by the, 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 the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, she, she I mean, the, the crew, the crew there in, in, in the film uh, were uh, wearing the, the, the face mask. You know, that, that shows that this is the pandemic time. And she led herself to voluntarily act to distribute social assistance to many, to, to many people, including uh, those who, who who perpetrated her rights in the past. So um, interfaith dialogue practice, of course, she shows in the film, is a unique way that many people should uh, find uh, <clears throat> whenever legalistic approach is uh, less enforceable. You know, sometimes uh, many human rights violations are not, uh, cannot be claimed by the victims because of, you know, public tranquility issues and uh, reasons, for example. You know, and, and then two keywords I, I, can, I, can, I can say in this, uh, at the moment is mutuality and commonality is, are, are the keywords for understanding uh, uh, interfaith dialogue practice because dialogue may be, be, may be uh, very often built uh, under certain circumstances, for example, uh, time, famine, climate change, and so on. So interfaith uh, Diet practice teaches us uh, how to build relationship uh, through seeing our mutual problems and have been brought onto the table uh, to address uh, together regardless of uh, yeah. what religions or identity we belong to. So it's not just about dialogue, but actually right action, uh, not just learning how to talk to each other, but do things together and not waiting for, for things to happen at a government level, structural level, even though that's important. But this is a personal story there. Um, Sam, Ingville, would you like to add to that after hearing Fernando and also others? What are some other thoughts that you have um, as we kind of wrap up this site and then get ready for the next uh, showing of the next two films? No, I would just like to say that we have got a question here from one of the participants, and I just like to 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 on the chat, and I would like to uh, share it with you, and then we can maybe come back to that during the panel discussion or later. Uh, my simple question after watching this movie is, and this is from uh, uh, one of the participants, would it be possible? to be human in a world where monotheistic religions had spread all, almost all over the world and treating humanity based upon their theistic understandings. <laughs> so this is a challenge, I assume, to religions where religion is used to suppress humanity, but I would just like to comment that I fully appreciate uh, that perspective and definitely it's true in many situations, but just like ideologies and life perspectives of different kinds can be misused, also religions can be misused, but I think at the bottom of most religions uh, that I know, there is a deep sense of humanity and equal human dignity, and although that is not always practiced, neither by religious or non-religious persons, that is a resource in, in all or most religions, and that's the resource that we should build upon for equal dignity and, and seeing each other as humans, as I said, so I think it's a challenge for both religious and non-religious persons, I would think. Um, what do you think? Um, I would agree with what Ingvil said. Um, I feel at the end of the day, it comes down to, um, uh, as Ingvil said, humanity. So actually being able to um, see the impacts of, of uh, our own beliefs on others and whether that is truly what we want to uh, live by. And I think that bringing it back to Rizdo's film, I think it, it does, uh, the film does that. It shows, uh, it humanizes um, these complex problems and it shows uh, the emotions behind these actions. And um, so, yeah, I think it comes down back to humanity at the end of the day. Thank you. And it's interesting, we are experiencing some humanity over Zoom and YouTube right now, actually screen to screen, and trying to get some face-to-face -face 
encounter and we do look forward to actually meet in person and uh, congratulations once again to Risto, Fernando and team for producing this actually in the midst of this pandemic. So I yes. uh, just want to our appreciate deep, that. Our deep congratulations to, to the team and thank you for doing this thank with you. the support of Norway. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. We are moving on to the next two films now, uh, and they are from Bali. Uh, we will show them in sequence uh, on, on unity and tolerance. There will be subtitles, and then later after that, I will have a conversation with Guna, who is, uh, who is a director and produced these films. But first, let us uh, watch these two films on unity and tolerance. Iragel embas ring gumi Indonesia. Gumi sane asri antuk penyuan pulau, sane ake madue ke ane karagaman. Saking mekuah nyani, pulau saking sabang rauh ke Meroki. Iraga sami, pasti ke nenten tanruh malih saking pulau Bali. Pulau sane eksotis, Saneka sub suge antuk seni lan budaya lan makuah pabinayan sane wenten sinalih tunggil pabinayan agama pabinayan agama sane wenten sepatutnya ne nenten ngwat wang beta dua ning kwe aktiane pabinayan agama Saling nagingin. Pabina yang unika. Saling ngejernin. Pabina yang unika. Sejak ini. Pada ini. Untuk cara punya ke pembinaan-pembinaan saling wenten Boya je sekali waktu saling ngawangnya Nanging ngecenin iraga kayu nyata Rasa saling nemu bahagia Di tiang Hindu Di tiang Protestan Di tiang Katolik Di tiang Muslim Di tiang Muda Di tiang Omuju Dan di tengah perbedaan kita Ada persatuan Sering jaga puniki, akeh manusia sana berkomentar negatif indik perbedaan agama reng keluarga, raneng rana yang hidup yang tindrukun. Padahal, minten sami fata, contohnya reng keluarga kita. Kita yang sarung memen dipiangi nganut agama sana melenang, nanging iraga tetap akur, harmonis, saling menghargai, tur saling membantu. Sebilang wai, Iraga sedatang dengan sembahyang menurut agama dan kepercayaan yang sepatutnya. Yang setengah dua. Ya, ya, ya. Nah. Jadi kalau untung ada. Ya, angkat mana-mana. Agama penting rencaga tepuniki. Beda agama ngerananya iraga hidup damai. Dan wenten agama sana ngajahang umatnya kejelekan. Sami agama pasti ke ngajahang umatnya kebaikan. I'd like to uh, bring in the director, Guna, from Basa Bali. And of course, for the 
he can mention a little bit about the second film because it was about tolerance in the family. Maybe that's a, a good starting point because we didn't have subtitles for that. Could you give us a summary of, of that uh, second film? And then, of course, share with us uh, about the first one too. Guna, over to you. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. I hope you are always happy and also healthy during the pandemic situations. Uh, I'm Guna from Basa Bali Wiki. So as all of us knows that Indonesia is a very big country, right? And it consists uh, more than 1,000 ethnic groups, yeah? 718 religion, uh, regional languages or mother tongue and six uh, religions. It is Muslim, Christianity, Catholicism, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Confucian, uh, Confucianism. Uh, this, uh, this differences are uh, religious uh, potential to be cause of uh, friction in Indonesia. Therefore, the production of documentary videos that contain uh, a ways to uh, the way to maintain a religious harmony in Indonesia it's a uh, very necessary, right? And then uh, Basa Bali Wiki, with the help uh, of uh, various organizations and also foundations. Uh, carries out the efforts uh, to the Wikiton Pakilitan Pakilitan Agama uh, or uh, interfaith uh, Wikiton competitions. Uh, in one moment, uh, when we disseminate uh, the results of uh, the competition to the public through our uh, social media, uh, there was a lot of good response from the community. A video entitled uh, Sandia has been watched as uh, many 500 people. It's shared by 4,000 people. Yes, I think uh, with so many viewers of this video, we firmly believe that the videos on how to treat religious differences are very necessary to maintain and once again maintain religious harmony in Indonesia. So I think with this video or like sort of film, uh, we can realize the motto of uh, Bineka Tunggalika in Indonesia or Unity in Diversity. Uh, I think Thank that's you. the point. That's really good because uh, in, in your films, one is a uh, more macro, a broader view, and the other one is more like in a family. And I thought that you brought it up uh, very well, very interesting. Um, uh, what are some key lessons that you have learned in, in uh, working with others, uh, partnering in doing this? Because this was, in a sense, an international partnership, right? Uh, with with yeah. overseas support, as well as people on the ground uh, sharing. Uh, would you like to share with us some of your the lessons that you have learned? Yes. Uh, can you... uh, what did you learn from this experience? Yes, I think uh, the people uh, from Indonesia, especially in uh, Bali, uh, can get uh, the way uh, to make the harmony because uh, we are in Indonesia, uh, has a lot of uh, religions, right? So uh, with this video, uh, we can uh, try to... Uh, give the people uh, the way to make it a uh, harmony and things like that. Thank you. It's really about, uh, I, I love Bali, you know, as many, some of us have had opportunity to be there. It, has, it brings a certain uh, flavor to, to, to Indonesia that is quite unique. It's not just a holiday destination, as you said, but actually it's a place where we can learn from, from one another. Did you ever come so to Bali, yeah? <laughs> yes, of course I have. And I think some of us will want to go to Bali. Uh, as we yes. see that, that attractiveness there. But I'm, I'm sure Indonesia has many uh, things that we can learn from. So thank you very much, uh, Guna, uh, sharing with us from Basa Bali Wiki. And congratulations again on the two films. I'd like to bring in back the panel to share uh, their uh, experiences of the film. And uh, I'd like to also in invite all of you who are participants, you can share to all panelists and attendees, what is your feeling uh, when you watch the film and what is your feedback? So yes, um, let, let's probably start with Ingville. Okay, yes. Um, I would like to first again congratulate the, not only the ba Bazabali for, 
for making this competition with our support from NORAD, but also to congratulate the producers of the two films. I hope that you're watching now uh, to the d two teams. Congratulations with two wonderful t films in two minutes each, which were our limit for this. Um, uh, I would like to say that the first film touches me very much because it's so clear that these young people from six different religious backgrounds, they don't only tolerate one another in the sense of enduring, Latin word tolerare, that you endure one another, but they also share, uh, they share their joy in learning from each other and being with each other while also respecting the differences. Uh, you can see their joy in talking to each other and showing each other the different places, learning from each other. So I think that is, that's one step further from tolerance. And I would also like to then comment on the second film, which is called Tolerance in the Family. But I think still this is what I would call, if there is something that could be called deep tolerance maybe. Uh, the deep tolerance where you, again, don't only endure and cope with the others, being different from you, but also feel a joy in, in showing your respect for that and, and where this mother and daughter actually help each other to prepare for their worships uh, of two different faiths within the frame of the family. I find that deeply touching. Uh, and both these films, as the first one, touched my heart. Fernando, how do you feel as an Indonesian watching this? Now you're in Sulawesi. Maybe yeah. this makes you want to go to Bali for a while, right? But uh, no, yes, what did you feel when you watched the films? No, uh, I've never been to Bali for, I mean, to be honest, but I'm, I'm, I'm expecting myself to be in Bali next month. Uh, but I know a lot about Bali, about the economic development there, about tourism. But, you know, watching this film, that, that, I mean, what comes to my mind after watching this film is like, uh, people in Bali, of course, they, I mean, the, the young people, the people in Bali needs, uh, need, uh, like, uh, not to, like, need to be inclusive uh, in society because, you know, because talking about Bali, talking about Bali means like we, we are thinking about economic, thinking about economic tourism in Bali. So inclusivity needs, is, is needed by people in Bali because inclusive society contributes to the economic development for the people, you know. Like uh, <clears throat> diversity offers, I mean, in the film, the film shows us uh, like the diversity offers a uh, uniqueness uh, to the locals to develop their economic by ut utilizing their very diversity as the source of economic. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> as, as I say, this is very context of Bali. And of course, uh, you know, if, if conflict happens in Bali, that will create anxiety for the people to explore. I mean, to, to come to Bali and then also people in Bali will not get any uh, economic uh, benefit from, um, from the tourism. They have, they have very good uh, par uh, like, uh, nature to be, to be offered and also the culture, the diversity that Bali has. So, uh, <clears throat> so I mean, they, they only will get this through peace. They, they, need, they, they will have economic development if they have peace. So, uh, and conflicts therefore create discrimination, you know, like if they have conflict and then discrimination will be everywhere and then uh, discrimination and then violation and then also violence hampers the, 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 the vulnerable, the Bali people who enjoy the climate of tourism and then also economic development because of the diversity they have. Yeah. So uh, uh, inclusivity also helps people uh, like, uh, like, like to, to, to engage everybody. So no, no, so no it's one not just behind. about tourism, right? Yeah. It's yeah, about yeah. inclusivity. Sam, yeah, what do you think people. as you watch this, uh, all the way in London, it's quite far away from, from Bali and uh, what are some things, impulses that came to you? Well, definitely the whole, um, idea of showing a different side to Bali that, I feel people even in London might be more familiar with the tourism. Um, I think that was very powerful. Um, and I, I love that, first of all, the films, they're beautiful. And as Ingvo was saying before, um, you know, it's not just showing tolerance uh, for people of different faiths, but the message of actual joy in being united on that stance. Um, that I feel that emanated very strongly in the film um, and in the notion that you know we thrive when we celebrate this diversity as a society. That came across, across very clearly for me. And I, I just want to say from a technical point of view, I think it, especially with the first film, I really enjoyed the directness 
the the protagonist had in speaking to the camera to the viewer because it makes it very uh, clear the messaging and the side by side shots where uh, each person was expressed very clearly stating their faith their stance and continuing on with that message i feel really hones it um brings it home uh, so that resonated very strongly with me and their films i feel can really be used to anchor conversations or at least start conversations around these themes it gives you a starting point um uh, to to carry on conversation that's right and now we're going to move to the next film very soon but i think all of you managed to capture something that there's the indirectness of the films on one side but there's also a directness where the message just comes clearly through the films to start and i think ingvi wanted to say something uh, to just chip in as well not me but i have from the chat here uh greeting again or one of our participants uh, uh, and he or she says that it's really nice to see the diversity i like to be in touch with similar events uh uh and uh the short movie in Bali, Indonesia is good. I haven't visited it. Blah, blah, blah. And there is another comment here which is saying that it's so good that these films address the real cultural life. So everyday life events. It's not like fancy rituals. It's everyday life events on the ground, the practice and the daily life of ordinary people. So that was another comment I would like to share with uh, with everybody and not least the producers of the film. And again, congratulations to Bazi Bali for organizing this Vikiton, which resulted in, I think, uh, was it 25,000 comments or something? And uh, it was enormous. And, and 45 films of two minutes, which were assessed by a jury of experts. And these were the two, win the winner and the people's choice that we've seen now. Uh, so thank you once again to Bazi Bali as well. Thank you, Basabali. And indeed, um, this is something that is uh, very exciting to see the great participation. We're going to move to the next film, Young Guru for Peace. And uh, well, after watching the film, we'll have a conversation with uh, the project manager of, of this uh, project and to get to know more. And then we'll continue on with the conversation uh, afterwards. So now towards the, the next film, Young Guru for Peace. <laughs> Kabupaten Halmahera Utara adalah salah satu kabupaten di Pulau Halmahera, Provinsi Maluku Utara, Indonesia. Masyarakat Halmahera Utara adalah masyarakat yang plural baik suku dan agama. Agama mayoritas di Halmahera Utara adalah Kristen dan Islam. Agama Islam dan Kristen telah ada di Indahera ini sejak abad ke-16. Kedua komunitas umat beragama hidup damai mengikuti tradisi budaya Hibualamu. Budaya Hibualamu adalah budaya asli masyarakat Halmahera Utara. Hibualamu berasal dari bahasa Tobelo, di mana kata Hibua berarti rumah dan Lamo berarti besar. Hibualamu merupakan sebuah rumah besar yang dijadikan tempat berkumpul untuk melakukan higaro atau bermusyawarah. Pada saat ini, Hibualamu juga menjadi lambang dari nilai-nilai budaya di Halmahera Utara yang menjunjung nilai kekeluargaan dengan slogan Ngone Oria Dodoto yang berarti kita sebuah bersaudara. Namun, keharmonisan hidup masyarakat Hibualamu 
pernah dinodai dengan sejarah kelam konflik umat beragama pada tahun 1999 sampai 2000-an. Konflik tersebut memporak-porandakan tataran kehidupan yang rukun antar umat beragama bukan saja di Kabupaten Halmahera Utara, melainkan juga di seluruh Kepulauan Halmahera bahkan di seluruh Maluku Utara. Kehancuran yang diakibatkan oleh konflik tersebut mendorong masyarakat untuk kembali melihat kearifan nilai dan tradisi Ibu Alamo sebagai fondasi dalam membangun kembali perdamaian dan merekatkan keharmonisan dan kerukunan masyarakat Halmahera Utara. Nilai-nilai Ibu Alamo mulai dihidupkan dan dilembagakan melalui peran aktif para tokoh adat Ibu Alamo. Berbagai upaya penguatan kembali nilai-nilai budaya Ibu Alamo seperti deklarasi perdamaian pada 19 April 2001. Para tokoh dan pegiat budaya terus berupaya menurunkan nilai-nilai budaya Ibu Alamo kepada generasi muda Halmahir Utara sebagai upaya melestarikan adat Ibu Alamo. Salah satu kesenian tradisional yang masih dilestarikan adalah Yangir. Yangir adalah musik tradisional yang dimainkan secara berkelompok. Sebuah grup yang ngere terdiri dari beberapa pemain juk, semacam ukulele, seorang pemain kaste, seorang pemain tamtam, dan beberapa penyanyi. Musik yang ngere biasa dimainkan dalam perayaan-perayaan seperti tahun baru dengan dibawakan oleh sekelompok orang yang bertamu dari rumah ke rumah masyarakat. Budaya yang di dalamnya terkandung nilai dan kearifan lokal yang diekspresikan melalui bahasa, simbol, rituasi, tradisi, dan kesenian dapat menjadi faktor pemersatu sekelompok orang. Budaya Ibu Alamu menjadikan komunitas masyarakat di Halmahera Utara bisa membangun kembali pemahaman yang sama tentang siapa mereka, dari mana mereka berasal, apa yang menjadikan mereka seperti sekarang, dan kemana mereka akan menuju. Mari menjaga kerukunan hidup dengan menjadikan budaya sebagai salah satu alat berkat dalam merawat atau membangun kembali kehidupan yang harmonis antar umat beragama. Sebagaimana nilai yang dijunjung Ibu Alamo Moni Oria Dodoto, orang semua basudara. Thank you, and I'd like to bring in Hendrian to join us as uh, she's the project manager for the, um, the film. Could you share with us what are some of the things that you, you remember most about doing this project and uh, some experiences that you've had? Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you to NORAD uh, as well as HL Center Minority Network for uh, your support in this project and uh, what i learned most from this project is that in this project we involve a lot with uh, young people in the inception until the completion of the project and it is very interesting that uh, young people also can redefine uh, the local wisdom and also contribute uh, their own meaning about uh, uh, promoting peace uh, using uh, local wisdom heritage and that uh, we can promote peace in a, in a way that can be cherished uh, by the sender of the message as well as the receiver of the message. So that's one thing that I learned a lot from young people. So uh, it's uh, enriched me as well in my uh, perspective and understanding when I'm preparing this project. Uh, it's interesting you highlighted two things. One is the local wisdom, which is very precious. And I think we all of us learned something from, from the film today. And also young people, that's also another theme, uh, looking forward. So we're not just looking stuck in the past. Well, um, right now, how, how has the film, uh, how has it contributed to, to where you, you are right now? How has it helped people to live more peacefully? Would you share with us some examples? Yes. Um, first of all, is the 
making of the project itself uh, create new bond between the participants that coming from uh, young people from uh, interfaith communities. So uh, the way they conduct each other is one thing that I, I think is the message itself that young people is not only a voice but also the peace promoter by the way they conduct themselves, by the way they interact with each other. So that's uh, one thing and we also would like to represent that in the film itself because we want to reach uh, young people actually uh, to be moved by this message and carry on this mess uh, by the spreading of this message. Yeah. Thank you, Andrean. Now, because of time, I'd like to bring in, uh, I want to first thank you for, for your contribution. I think we have learned a lot. And once again, congratulations uh, on this film. And I think it also reminds me of the creation, the, the environment as well, and how that is part and parcel of us living together. Uh, so that was a very beautiful uh, film. Thank you so much. So I'd like to bring in the panel back, Fernando, Ingville, and Sam, for you to share with us your thoughts and your feelings about this. And um, yeah, anyone would like to go? Sam, maybe you can go first this time again. Sure, yes. Um, what really stood out to me with this film, which was beautiful, was this um, the value and the importance of creating space for interfaith dialogue. So I think that comes across very clearly. Um, and the idea of turning to the arts and culture as that bridge to create that space um, as we saw in the film, you know, the, the Hibu Alamo, um, the big house for meetings, it hints at this notion of just having the space to come together and discuss, have dialogue, but crucially, listening. And listening is what's uh, key to interfaith understanding, to really um, hear other experiences and hear other points of views. So this film to me really just uh, stood out in that sense. And yeah, cinematic right. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so often we think of dialogue as just talking, but actually it's very much of it's about listening and we are having an opportunity to listen and watch as well. Fernando, how about you? Yes, uh, very interesting uh, film. Actually, this film invites, uh, reminds young people actually about the past uh, bloody Muslim Christian conflict in 1999 through 2005. And, <clears throat> you know, uh, the film reminds the young people, uh, particularly, uh, of course, like to 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 learn about uh, the past history, but don't go back to the past. You no, know, like because we 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 don't get any benefit from from the past conflict. So uh, and also the <clears throat> the film, uh, uh, like um, how to say, um, you know, the film also highlights the Hibu Alamo as the meeting space. I, I, I call in in different term terminology the meeting space, meeting space for all people to find the true peace. You know, like, uh, you know, dialogue, as, as Sam said, uh, it's not only, I mean, about talking, talking, but also through creativity. So the film highlights about the creativity. The film also teaches young people uh, to do creativity instead of thinking or doing or, uh, uh, yeah, doing something, uh, conflict uh, in the future, for, uh, for example. And now all the way to Oslo, you know, we are in this space now. We're in this big house <laughs> in this space and Oslo... Uh, <laughs> Ingville, how about you? Yes, actually, this center is actually a house for dialogue. It's a house where different faith, lifestyles, communities meet for dialogue. It's they are on the board. Uh, so, uh, but I would also like to say that as Sam, it was it struck me that this film shows us how art, and in this case, music in particular, can be also provide a space or a ground for interfaith understanding without words, <laughs> without always dialogue in that sense, but that they can actually meet and they can share this musical experience. That was very strong to me. But also, as Sam said, that there is a need for good and safe environment for those dialogues to happen and, and for people really to provide that safe space to address sometimes difficult issues and to and to communicate a sense of, of deep, deep respect, all, despite all differences. Uh, so to me, that film was really making those two points very clear. And as Fernando says, that we shouldn't ignore the conflicts of the past, the atrocities of the past. We should watch them, learn from them, recognize them, 
And then remember that to avoid that, we need to create this space for dialogue. We need to create this feeling of community and unity across all divides. And, and music can do that. Thank you. And I'd like to invite the participants to share with us in the chat uh, what, are, what is one thing that you have gained from watching all three of these uh, films, uh, three, three parts, I think it's four films. And um, if you have, I've noticed some of you even shared, you're from Sri Lanka, you're from other places where you have shared your own films uh, that you have done, and you can just put it in the links so that we can be in touch with you or we can have some sense of community. Uh, this is a space for us to share with each other. And I'd like to invite you, at least what is one word that came to your mind and just put it down and just write it down, send it to all panelists and attendees in the chat. You can type it there in Bahasa Indonesia or in English or in the language of your choice. We want to be as inclusive as possible here. And uh, this will be really wonderful. And as we take this short pause, as I will invite the panelists to come back again with uh, Guna, we want to just move into a different tone and just to think about how can we use these films or why are these films important for us to use them, especially in a time like this, in a time of physical distancing, right? Uh, is this, are these films able to bring us closer together before we return back, if possible, soon or later into this so-called new normal? But is the new normal a new abnormal? So that's something for us to reflect on. So share with us one word. What do you feel uh, when you watch these films? Uh, what inspires you? What do you learn? Uh, just flood the chat with your, your views. And I'd like to invite Guna also into here, but I think... Well, Guna is no longer here with us, I think. We'll tell you if he's, back, he's getting back on. Sorry. Okay. Could be technical difficulties, but there's always a challenge when you're doing all these things live. So I guess it'll be four of us then uh, having this conversation. Uh, so, at yeah, least from the, the conversation uh, here on, on chat, somebody says peaceful. One of the words that's come up here is peaceful. It makes him or her peaceful. And somebody says inspired. Um, yeah, so those are some other words. <laughs> That's so right, far. and there's a sense of to hope. Tolerance is coming up here. Yeah, keep going. Uh, I asked the participants to just keep sharing uh, uh, in the chat. And so now four of you, uh, three of you, as well as many others have watched it. And you can also share uh, at participants how you do do you think you might use these films? And, and wh why is it important? How can these films be a tool, a good tool, efficient tool for education in inclusive uh, citizenship? What are your thoughts? Hope has also come up here on the, on the chat. So we have hope, tolerance, peacefulness, inspiration, as for the words so far. Please continue sharing what you feel. That's right. So how do we convey um, this hope? Yeah, go ahead, Sam. Um, just to answer your question uh, about why film, I think the beauty of film, and it's one of my favorite mediums for communication on such issues, is that, you know, filmmakers, you have the, the scope to carefully tailor a message. Um, and depending on how you choose to tell it, you can give a very powerful range. And I think our relationship with film is worth reflecting for a second on, because if you think about it, how often do you find yourself in a position to have um, a screen in front of you and have a viewer totally, completely immersed in your message, absolutely just open to being told something? That's, I feel, what film is, um, a viewer being receptive to any messages. Um, and that's why film is a powerful tool. I feel like you have everyone's ears in that moment. And not just ears, but uh, as you also have images in front of you. So you can show things that maybe a viewer can't access themselves um, in a physical space or in real life. You can introduce new ideas. Um, you can plant a seed and just crack a little window open to a new vision or a new view. So for me, um, I feel film, as we've seen today, you know, it's anchoring a conversation for us. Um, we came together today in this event because of these films um, to discuss these issues. So for me, it's um, a powerful, powerful medium. 
And one of the things is we don't want it, the films just to be limited in this Zoom call on this YouTube, but we want these films to be used uh, in education. And Fernando, from your perspective, you know, how would you use it? I mean, in what ways you could use these, not only the film that you produce, but also the others? Yes. Uh, you know, like, uh, especially in this pandemic time, um, uh, many young people are, are staying at home and then working at home. Uh, working from home and then they they are uh, watching a lot of movies uh, and and also you know you know young young people in indonesia they they would like to watch like korean people uh, korean uh, movies uh, because they like watching and then um and also the, the just to to uh to uh, like heal from the stress uh, from this pandemic time and then also we have uh, <coughs> we have a lot of uh, like uh, two like 140 million users of internet out of the 270 million uh, total population in Indonesia so this is for us a very uh, powerful uh, platform uh, to be to to share the the good news from uh, through movie actually uh, to young people you know because uh, fake news and information that contain hate speech are increasingly uh, enhancing at the moment in Indonesia so we, we think that the this kind of uh, films can be uh, uh, like uh, educational platform for young people not to watch the the fake uh, the fake news or to get the fake news from uh, like hate, hatred information but to watch this uh, very positive narrative uh, movies yeah, it's, it seems that uh, people see social media or even films or little clips or memes or whatever as a means of spreading hate. And that's a reality. But, uh, but these films want to bring hope as a different vision of what life could be. Ingville, I mean, as, as an edu someone who supports, you've seen that all these projects uh, come to completion and to this stage, what do you think? How, how would you use them or how would you suggest that we could use these, these films as tools? Well, actually, when we started this project with the support of NORAD and in partnership with MRG, uh, we hoped that these films would be uh, of use to the partners themselves when they produce them in their education and, and awareness raising. But we see that these films are so excellent that we want to share them with the world. And hence this international launch and also hence the international conference in December where we have films from other countries as well. Uh, we are posting it online on our, our project web website, but we really hope that these will be able to be used in school education as inspiration, as a basis for discussion, but also by civil society organizations that they can use these films as a point of discussing, uh, discuss, uh, discussion uh, of interfaith understanding, what is the basis for it, what does it mean, how can it be exercised and encouraged uh, in different ways. But what struck me through this project, um, it started just half a year ago, uh, this specific uh, online uh, project for Indonesia, and uh, with the grants of NORAD, and it struck me that just making the films, it seems like all these partners, they haven't been making films in this way before on interfaith understanding. It seems to me that just encouraging young people to make films with their videos, as the Baza Bali Vikitan did, uh, is also a way of encouraging interfaith understanding to make young people produce such films. And this is what we are now doing in Iraq and other countries, So, and getting exciting results. So I think both the process of making such films and the use of these films as a point of discussion in education is equally valuable. Uh, but of course, it can reach further out when the films are produced. I think film, and that's the basis of our whole project, is reaching the hearts of people in addition to the mind mm. in a way that, that you don't necessarily do when you read an article. So articles are important, I'm a researcher myself, but I think films are a very good media for creating this deep understanding and to see people as human beings. And I hope that education at all levels can embrace that and that these little films can be uh, inspirational uh, for that. So please use these films, use the experience, in your education, and we'll definitely do so uh, in the continuing uh, issue of, of this project. And, and I guess uh, even though we're emphasizing young people here, those of you with gray hairs like me, uh, I think we are touched by these films as well. So there's an intergenerational dimension here, cross-cultural, intergenerational, international, and interreligious. I think these are really various dimensions of, of these films uh, that are really uh, powerful for us. And uh, really congratulations to all, who, all those who produced it and those who funded it and those who worked together to make this happen. So um, 
before I pass the time to to Fernand, uh, the uh, UN uh, rapporteur uh, for minority issues, um, I just wanted to go back to the panel again, just to thank you, the panel, for sharing. And if there's one word that you would want to say, or one sentence you want to say to all of us here in the participants, what would that be? You know, summarize it in one sentence. Or if you want to do an action or whatever, that would be really good. And then we'll pass the time to to uh, Fernand for some closing remarks because he really sat with us through the whole time and watching this, and that would be very interesting to hear his views. So um, let's start from uh, Ingville first, and then we'll go Sam, uh, Ingville, Fernando, and Sam. So one word or one sentence. Um, I think one word I would say, and I feel it, Gratitude, gratefulness. Thank you. That's good. Yes, uh, just one sentence, not not one word. Uh, I believe the the films will uh, strongly, uh, you know, uh, you know, engage young people or intergenerational intergener people to think about peace and tolerance, especially in the context of Indonesia. Thank you. And Sam, final word from you. Ooh. No pressure. <laughs> um, I would just say, um, please continue and promote uh, storytelling and making sure that the people telling the stories are those um, with the, the lived experience anchored in these communities. I think that needs to continue. Thank you. So thank you once again to our panel for uh, giving us some commentary, engaging the mind as well as the heart. Thank you to all the uh, films that has been launched today. And now I'd like to pass the time to Fernand to share with us uh, what are your feelings. And thank you that uh, you very early in the morning, I think, where, where you are at. And I'd like to pass the time to you, the UN Special Rapporteur for Minority Issues. Over to you, Fernand. Thank you. Terima uh, Father Steven. Salamat siang. Hello, everyone. Uh, first, congratulations to all of you who've participated in this launch of the Living Together Interfaith Short Film Launch, and to the organizers of the Norwegian Center for Holocaust and Minority Studies, uh, part of the Inclusive Citizenship Project, the Lutheran World Federation, Minority Rights Group International, and especially to Ewingville for this initiative. It seems today that the world looks like and feels like a more intolerant place. I think what we saw with the four short films are beacons of light, messages of hope showing how to contribute to interfaith understandings and embracing our human diversity through dialogue, mutuality and commonality as we heard also earlier today. And it's important to have hope amid despair. This is one of the, the feelings that I retain. It's important to show the good stories that can too easily be unseen in a world which tends to exaggerate the negative and accentuate the differences and bias against minorities, especially minorities of religion or belief. It's also important to keep in mind, or one of the responses that, that I, I had, was that your messages are messages of inspirations, of inclusiveness, of not looking at our religious or belief differences as something threatening or evil or wrong. And these are the kinds of messages which social and other media need to highlight and, and promote of our equal humanity and dignity the need to overtake adversity instead of always pushing negative stereotyping or blaming our differences of faith or belief, our differences of language or the colors of our skin, which can only lead to misunderstandings, fear of denial of our universal human rights and rejection and even unfortunately to violence. So to all of you then, bravo. I hope, I hope the use of this, of this kind of medium this medium of communication could be part of, uh, actually could be part of next year's celebrations in 2022 of the United Nations 30th anniversary of the Declaration of the Rights of Persons Belonging to National or Ethnic Religious and Linguistic Minorities, when we need messages of hope and faith and celebration of our diversity as members all of the same human family and reaching, as we heard earlier, and reaching our hearts in addition to our minds. 
So to everyone again, best of luck and success in whatever direction your future and future initiatives and messages of hope take. Terima kasih. Thank you very much. Terima kasih, Fernand, for your kind words and uh, words of encouragement. Indeed, in a world full of narratives or stories of hostility and, and increasing even hatred, sad to say, uh, we need hope, inspiration to actually have imagined not only a different world, but actually work together towards it. And I think this has been a privilege and honor for the Lutheran World Federation to work with HR Centre, the Inclusive Citizen Project, and also Minority uh, Groups International. Uh, it has been such a privilege and joy for us to work uh, together for this as well. So thank you once again, Fernand, for your words, and we look forward to, to next year. And there are some things that, that will happen before next year. So I'm going to pass the time to Ingville to share with us uh, some things coming up uh, before we reach next year. We don't have to wait uh, too long. So over to you, Ingville, before we wrap up. Thank you, Sivan. And again, thank you, Sivan, for... Uh for moderating this launch in a wonderful way and for all your cooperation uh, leading up to this and also from our side from the uh, to, to the Monarchy Rights Group International and to the other partners, not least the partners locally in Indonesia. It's been a privilege cooperating with you guys. And I think one of the unintended effects of this project, which is supported by NORAD, the Norwegian Agency for Development Cooperation, uh, is that you, the three partners in Indonesia that we picked based on our call for grants, uh, you now know about each other and hopefully uh, the three of you might stick together uh, and do something exciting, contact your UNESCO commission in Indonesia, continue working on these films. Maybe we can somehow support you making a workshop together using this film for educational purposes, either separately or together. We would be happy to do that. Um, but again, as Sivan says, uh, there is no end to this. <laughs> this. This just has to be rolling. And as I said, we have now had a similar competition inspired by the Baza Bali Wikitan, which we thought was so excellent and brilliant, having these short films uh, produced by whoever wanted to participate. So we did the same in Iraq with uh, Iraqi partners, and we've received a lot of films, and they're now being assessed by a group of experts, as was the case in Bali. And uh, we will have this project going on for uh, half a year, and then some of the films will be selected to be shown at the International uh, Film Festival on Interfaith Understanding and Inclusive Citizenship on December 7, in the week where the Nobel Peace Prize is happening in Oslo, or, or in virtually, <laughs> maybe, but also in Oslo. And I hope to see you guys there. Follow us on the www.inclusivecitizenship.no which is our project website. Um, and also we're going to do this in, in partnership with MRG, Monetarized Group International, and also I hope with Seven and uh, LVF uh, that you will participate at least uh, in organizing one of the workshops there. And we will see definitely see these films again then. Uh, and uh, we hope that this is something that can be inspirational to others. Um, and we'll we'll just uh, keep working and at least I feel very inspired and um, we get the feedback from other participants that this is also inspiring them and this is the most we can hope for. We'll focus on the good work, we focus on the hope and again a warm thanks not only to all the participants but the panelists and not least to you Fernando Varan, for getting up all in the morning to join us. And it's always inspirational to listen to you and, and also making a little commercial for your regional forums uh, on the issues of minority rights uh, and which are addressing this year uh, the issue of conflict in relation to an overcoming conflict on the basis of ethnic and religious uh, divides and uh, leading up to the UN forum on that in Geneva uh, uh, later this year. So go to the website, for instance, of the Tamlantas Institute or to the website of the, of the UN Special Rapporteur of the UN and you'll have information about that. And the first one is happening on the 15th and 16th of June. Isn't that correct for the Middle East, Northern Africa and Africa? And then for Asia in the autumn. So 
So that's something which is really relevant also to this topic. And by that, again, a warm thank to NURA, the Norwegian Agency for Development Cooperation, for funding this project, which is a part of a larger project for us, supported by the Norwegian Ministry for Foreign Affairs, uh, which supports the Inclusive Citizenship Project in general. So a warm thanks to everybody. And again, Sivan, thank you. And to all our technical staff for guiding us through this. Um, and by that, I just say, see you again. Thank you. And how do you say thank you in Indonesian? Sivin, what is the word? What is Terima kasih. I'll let, I'll let, I'll let, I'm a Malaysian, so I'll let the Are Indonesians. <laughs> Terima kasih. What? Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Receive yes. love. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Thank yeah. you. So, terima kasih everyone for joining us. Terima